Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Z Show. And this is part two of my review of the State of the Union Address. As we left off, President Donald Trump was talking to this American hero that's the only black African American, I call him black, was one, is 100 years ago. 100 years old. Sorry, it's been late. All right, so we're going to continue. Let me see here. We're going to continue in three, two, one. From the pilgrims to the founders, from the soldiers at Valley Forge to the marchers at Selma, and from President Lincoln to the Reverend Martin Luther King, Americans have always rejected limits on our children's future. Members of Congress, we must never forget that the only victories that matter in Washington are victories that deliver for the American people. Look at that. <laughs> I just want to say, from Adam Schiff and Jerry Nowlin, Adam Schiff, a.k.a. K, a. K. A. Schiffy Schiff, Pencil Neck, and Bug Eye, and Jerry Natler, a.k.a. The Penguin. Don't look happy. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go in three, two, one. Country. Their dreams are the soul of our country, and their love is what powers and sustains our country. We must always remember that our job is to put America first. first. Ha! Look at those knuckleheads. step forward in building an inclusive society is making sure that every young American gets a great education there we go. and the opportunity to achieve the American dream. Yet for too long, countless American children have been trapped in failing government schools. To yep. rescue these students, 18 states have created school choice in the form of opportunity scholarships. The programs are so popular that tens of thousands of students remain on a waiting list. One of those students is Janaya Davis, a fourth grader from Philadelphia, Janaya. Remember, Democrats are saying that Donald Trump is racist. Is he? I think not. Continue. Janiyah's mom, Stephanie, is a single parent. She would do anything to give her daughter a better future. But last year, that future was put further out of reach when Pennsylvania's governor vetoed legislation to expand school choice to 50,000 children. Janiyah and Stephanie are in the gallery. Stephanie, thank you so much for being here with your beautiful daughter. Thank you very much. And now she's not standing up. Yeah, she does. But Janiyah, I have some good news for you because I am pleased to inform you that your long wait is over. I can proudly announce tonight that an opportunity scholarship has become available. It's going to you, and you will soon be heading to the school of your choice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, see? Democrats are sitting down. Democrats are sitting down. Now I call on Congress to give one million American children the same opportunity Janiyah has just received. 
pass the Education Freedom Scholarships and Opportunities Act because no parent should be forced to send their child to a failing government school. Uh-huh. Look at that. Ah, you're sitting down. Every young person should have a safe and secure environment in which to learn and to grow. For this reason, our magnificent First Lady has launched the Be Best initiative to advance a safe, healthy, supportive, and drug-free life for the next generation. Online, in school, and in our communities. Thank you, Melania, for your extraordinary love and profound care for America's children. Thank you very much. Yeah, first lady. And you're not standing up, Nancy Pelosi? Really? My administration is determined to give our citizens the opportunities they need, regardless of age or background. Through our pledge to American workers, over 400 companies will also provide new jobs and education opportunities to almost 15 million Americans. My budget also contains an exciting vision for our nation's high schools. Tonight, I ask Congress to support our students and back my plan to offer vocational and technical education in every single high school in America. Wow. <laughs> oh, now you stand up. You're just sitting down, Mitch. <laughs> to expand equal opportunity, I am also proud that we achieved record and permanent funding for our nation's historically black colleges and universities. Yeah, baby. Okay, now, do you think Republicans are racist? No. Guess who's sitting down? The Democrats. Those are the ones that are racist. Continue. Continue. A good life for American families also requires the most affordable, innovative, and high-quality health care system on Earth. Before I took office, health insurance premiums had more than doubled in just five years. I moved quickly to provide affordable alternatives. Our new plans are up to 60% less expensive and better. I've also made an ironclad pledge to American families. We will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. And we will always protect your Medicare, and we will always protect your Social Security, always. <laughs> Democrats. The American patient should never be blindsided by medical bills. That is why I signed an executive order requiring price transparency. Experts believe that transparency, which will go into full effect at the beginning of next year, will be even bigger than health care reform. It will save families massive amounts of money for substantially better care. But as we work to improve Americans' health care, there are those who want to take away your health care, take away your doctor, and abolish private insurance entirely. Uh-huh. 
Democrat. 132 lawmakers in this room have endorsed legislation to impose a socialist takeover of our health care system, wiping out the private health insurance plans of 180 million very happy Americans. To those watching at home tonight, I want you to know we will never let socialism destroy American health care. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, baby. Democrat sitting down. <laughs> Over 130 legislators in this chamber have endorsed legislation that would bankrupt our nation by providing free taxpayer-funded health care to millions of illegal aliens, forcing taxpayers to subsidize free care for anyone in the world who unlawfully crosses our borders. These proposals would raid the Medicare benefits of our seniors and that our seniors depend on while acting as a powerful lure for illegal immigration. That is what is happening in California and other states. Their systems are totally out of control, costing taxpayers vast uh -huh. and unaffordable amounts of money. <laughs> she is They're forcing American it. taxpayers to provide unlimited free health care to illegal aliens sounds fair to you. Then stand with the radical left. But if you believe that we should defend American patients and American seniors, then stand with me and pass legislation to prohibit free government health care for illegal aliens. Ha 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 This will be a tremendous boon to our already very strongly guarded southern border where as we speak a long, tall, and very powerful wall is being built. Yeah, you the wall. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> we have now completed over 100 miles and have over 500 miles fully completed in a very short period of time. Early next year, we will have substantially more than 500 miles completed. My administration is also taking on the big pharmaceutical companies. We have approved a record number of affordable generic drugs and medicines are being approved by the FDA at a faster clip than ever before. <laughs> Democrats are pissed. <laughs> last year that for the first time in 51 years, the cost of prescription drugs actually went down. <laughs> Tell you, this one, this... Working together, Congress can reduce drug prices substantially from current levels. I've been speaking to Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa and others in Congress in order to get something on drug pricing done and done quickly and properly. I'm calling for bipartisan legislation that achieves the goal of dramatically lowering prescription drug prices. Get a bill on my desk and I will sign it into law immediately. Yeah. Okay, okay. Here, here are Democrats. Look at that. With unyielding commitment, we are curbing the opioid epidemic. <laughs> Drug overdose deaths declined for the first time in nearly 30 years. Among the state's hardest hit, Ohio is down 22%. Pennsylvania is down 18%, Wisconsin is down 10%, and we will not quit until we have beaten the opioid right. epidemic once and for well, all. Oh, yeah. Oh.
Oh, they clap now. <laughs> Protecting Americans' health also means fighting infectious diseases. We are coordinating with the Chinese government and working closely together on the coronavirus outbreak in China. My administration will take all necessary steps to safeguard our citizens from this threat. We have launched ambitious new initiatives to substantially improve care for Americans with kidney disease, Alzheimer's, and those struggling with mental health. And because Congress was so good as to fund my request, new cures for childhood cancer, and we will eradicate okay, the, the AIDS, AIDS epidemic academic. in America by the end of this decade. Ah, uh, they're standing. Almost every American family knows the pain when a loved one is diagnosed with a serious illness. Here tonight is a special man. All right, here we go. Now, listen to this. Beloved by millions of Americans who just received a stage four advanced cancer diagnosis. This is not good news. But what is good news is that he is the greatest fighter and winner that you will ever meet. Rush Limbaugh, thank you for the decades of tireless devotion to our country. <laughs> They're burning up now. Ah, you're sitting down. And Rush, in recognition of all that you have done <laughs> for our nation, the millions of people a day that you speak to and that you inspire, and all of the incredible work that you have done for charity, I am proud to announce tonight that you will be receiving our country's highest Civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Whoa, yes! <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Yeah, she's sitting down like a nut. I will now ask the First Lady of the United States to present you with the honor, please. <laughs> Rush and Catherine, congratulations. Thank you. Ah, that's the best part of the speech. <laughs> I got to go, but I want you to see that. Y'all know what happened at the rest of it. And then what Nancy Pelosi did at the end disgusts me. But thank you, Rush. For over 30 years, teaching us the conservative.
Thank you. I like to thank uh, Fox News for letting me do this. Thank you, Fox News. And I gotta go, but thanks a lot. Subscribe to my channel. I know you're gonna put some comments on there, so go ahead and do it. My president, Donald Trump, is not a racist. And he's not sexist. They proved it right there. <laughs> I gotta go. Thanks for watching.